All right, in this tutorial, we're going to texture map a simple throw pillow. I started off with a basic polygon cube that I've divided four times in the height, width, and depth. And then I've edited the top and bottom with soft select and the move tool. First thing I want to do is right click and assign a new material. I'm going to choose a Lambert. I'll name it. And then I'm going to go to the color node. I'll click on the checkerboard pattern at the far right of the slider and I'll click on checker. And it introduces this simple checkerboard pattern that's going to allow us to determine if our texture map will fit its aspect ratio properly. Now there are two things you want to remember once you've made the model and you've applied that default checker pattern. First thing is to delete the history. And second, very important, go to Modify and choose Freeze Transforms. This will make sure that when we use the automatic mapping function, it keeps our texture UV maps proportional to the shapes of the rectangles that comprise this. So we look at this, we, if we look at it from the top view, we've got squares essentially with our pattern on it. But then when we look at the side, there are these narrow rectangles. By freezing the transform, the automatic mapping will understand these shapes and map them accordingly. With my geometry selected in its object mode, I'll hold down the space bar, and I'm going to go to UV, and I'll click on the fourth tone down, automatic. You'll see six planes floating around the perimeter of your geometry in your viewport. I'm going to click outside to deselect. You'll see that you're in an object mode. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on object mode. I'll select it so that I see my green lines. And the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I've got the UV texture editor available. It would be a little green box with the checkerboard pattern in it. If you don't see it on your shelf, you would hold command shift. You'd go to UVs at the top of the user interface, and the very first choice is UV Editor. Now with my geometry selected in its object mode, I'll click on that, and it brings up my UV Texture Editor. Now I want to see the whole editing window, so I'll put my cursor over that window, right-click inside, and hit A for All. And if I were to zoom back a little bit further, you'll see that there is a box broken into four corners. The one in the upper right hand corner is where the checkerboard pattern is, as well as the UV shells that were just generated by the automatic mapping. Now, I don't need the checkerboard pattern at this point, so inside the UV editor, there is a little icon that looks like a very graphic mountain range with a little planet above it. When I click on that, it turns that texture off, and now I can see my UV shells pretty clearly. Now another thing I want to do is I want to fill them in with a blue so I have a good reference color for them. And if I look now to the right of the little horseshoe magnet, you'll see there is a blue box. I'll click on it, and now they've filled in blue, much easier to see. Now the first thing that jumps out at me is that this surface is the top or the bottom of the pillow, but in this instance, this surface is missing these two shell elements, UV maps, they appear over here. So my objective now is to cut them from the side panel and attach them there. So I'll right click over those shapes, I'll choose edge, and I'll select the edges that join it to that vertical rectangle which is one of the sides of the pillow. Once I've done so, I could go to polygons and choose cut UV edges. Now if I put my cursor over those two polygon shapes now, those faces, and I choose shell, right clicking. I can now select those two. I can hit W, and I can put them down in the general area that they'll end up being attached to. Now, I can also start to rotate these if I want to. I could use this manually. I could hit my E on the keyboard, and I could rotate like so. Or, if I wanted to, I could use these tools inside the UV Texture Editor. They're right below, almost like these little sailboat icons below the word image. You'll see these two arrowed uh, circular shapes, and they allow me to rotate 
clockwise or counterclockwise my two shells here, this, these little faces. Now once I've got it generally where I want, I'm going to right click and choose edge. And I know that if I select the inside edges of the missing surfaces here, they'll select the corresponding ones to that little piece that had been separated out. Now with those edges selected, I can go to Polygon, Move and Cell, and it puts them into position. Now my objective is to sew these side panels together so that I get that somewhat a seamless line for my texture once I go into Photoshop. So I'll, once again, I'll use my edges and I'll select these four across the top. I'll go to Polygon, Move and Sew, and I'll just continue this until all of these are one continual rectangle. Now, once I select the next row, I can go to Polygon, Move and Sew, or I can hit G on the keyboard, and that will repeat the previous function. I'll select the last four, and I'll go to Polygons, Move and Sew. Now I want to get everything into this corner, this upper right-hand corner, so that my texture map will appear on my model once I generate it and fix it in Photoshop. I'm going to right-click on that narrow rectangle. I'll choose Shell. I'll click on it, and I'll just put it off to the side. And I want to scale this, so I hit R on the keyboard. I'm going to scale it so it is small enough to fit inside that upper right-hand corner. And that looks pretty good. Now, there's a symmetry here in the sense that these two panels are pretty much the same. So to save space, I'm going to place them on top of each other. And I'm going to rotate them so they're pretty much on top and symmetrical. So once again, I'll use my rotation tool and I'll click until I see them pretty much lined up. And then I'll zoom back. I'll marquee select both of them, move them a little closer to the center, select the shell over on the right for the sides of the pillow, and move them into the corner as well. Now before I can generate that PSD network that I'll open in Photoshop and Texture, I have to go back to my geometry and return to the object mode. When I return to the object mode and then select my model, my UV maps appear in the UV editor. Now I can go up to Image, Create PSD Network. I'm going to direct it to my folder. I'm going to name it, and I'll hit Save. And I'll check my aspect ratio. It's by default that keep aspect ratio is probably locked and you want to keep it that way because it's reflecting what happens in this upper right hand corner. Usually the default size is 1024 by 1024, which is fine for this purpose. The next thing I'll do is I'll come down to the bottom where the attributes are. I'll select color and then by clicking on this little right V, it moves the desired attribute into the selected attribute column. Now I'll hit apply. When I do, everything becomes deselected, which means I was successful in generating that PSD. Now we'll go into Photoshop and we'll build our texture. Now that we're in Photoshop, I'm going to go to File Open and I'll go to my project folder. I'll select the PSD and hit open. Now it's a matter of just building our texture in the context of that UV map. Now you can see it brought in that checkerboard pattern by default as well, and we really don't need that anymore. So I'll hit D on the keyboard in Photoshop, and then Option Delete to fill it in with black. Now one thing to note is that the UV snapshot is outside of this little group or folder. Any texture that needs to appear on my model in Maya has to be inside that group or folder. So I'll select that layer because I know that once I copy and paste the texture into it, it's going to come in above the selected layer in Photoshop. I'll go to File Open, get my texture. I'll select it. And I'll paste it in. And I'll hit Command S to save. Now at this point, if I wanted to, I could scale this down and play with the proportions of it. That's something that you could do on your own. 
The important thing to note is that once you've made a change in Photoshop, you have to hit Command S to save it, to update it, because unless you do that, it won't update in Maya. So now I'll go to my texture, my material attributes, and I'll click on the little black box with the black triangle. And I'm going to also click on the word reload. And we can see now that our texture has been applied evenly on the sides and the top and bottom of our geometry. I'll hit three on the keyboard to get a better idea of what that'll look like. And there's your basic throw pillow.